Hello my fellow miner, I've been waiting for this. Really looking forward to it actually. The time is finally here, it's time to unlock Ergo. Or so I thought when I sat up the whole night trying to unlock the RTX 3080 Ti. Turns out it clocks very differently from the RTX 3060 LHR and the RTX 3070 LHR. I almost gave up but then I finally cracked it. More about that later in the video. Unlocking Ergo can be very tricky, so if you have problems, remember to watch the How to Clock chapter. I've included it because I think you may need the help. Now let's have a look at the RTX 3060 V2 LHR unlocked hash rate. I locked the core clock at 1540. Set the core clock to minus 100. Yes, that is not an error. That is actually on purpose. I'll explain. Uh, set the memory clock to 1300. I'm running with LHR 97.2, which is quite high, and that is actually due to the minus 100 in core clock. Uh, that stabilizes the, the voltage, and you'll actually see that, that the watts don't jump that much as we are used to when unlocking. This can also be used for Ethereum. My 3060 is using Samsung memory, and you should aim for 886 volt. Now let's have a look at the final result, even though the average can be done quite easily because it's super stable. And the average is 119.2 MHz per second at 102 watts, which gives an efficiency rating of 1.169. This is actually quite good, it's uh, way above my expectations. Let's quickly compare them to the Gen 1s I have running in HiveOS. You'll see that it's actually pretty close. The difference is of course that uh, the old one I, I don't need to, to clock the memory that high. I will call it a surprisingly nice result. Now let's move on to the RTX 3070 LHR. I locked the core clock to 1455, set the core clock to zero, memory clock to 1300. Again we'll see that the power usage is quite stable, it does jump a little bit sometimes, but for the most part it's super stable. The same with the hash rate, it's at 141.6 throughout pretty much, uh, it's very nice. This is my new favorite card. I will uh, definitely be working on it until I, I completely crack it. I want to get the maximum and I think I should be able to get 150, maybe even 160. But let's wait and see. A week or two from now, maybe even a month. I won't give up. Now let's have a look at the final result. 141.6 MHz per second at 98 watts, which gives an efficiency rating of 1.445. That is quite good, but pretty far from what I have in Hive OS with the first gen, which you can see here. I do believe that it's possible to get more out of it, and I will definitely keep trying until I succeed. Now let's have a look at my previous favorite, until last night where I cracked it. I locked the core clock to 1770, uh, core clock minus 100, and memory clock plus 1600. Now, this is actually an overclock of the card uh, compared to the others where you underclock. Here you can overclock it and you can run it at LHR 100. You can even clock it higher than this. I got it over 280 and then it crashed my PC, uh, not even a blue screen, straight up black screen with all fans running at full power. And then I uh, clocked it back a little bit and ended up with this. I may give it another try at a later point to see if I can get a stable over 280. Now let's have a look at the final result. 277 MHz per second at 266 watts, which gives an efficiency rating of 1.041. It's not a bad result, but uh, I don't like that it eats that much power. To me it seems a bit excessive. That most likely doesn't make much sense without the context, so let's have a look at my own clocks without any unlock. Here you can see my clocks um, as they are in T-Ranks. Uh, the RTX 3060 is actually better unlocked. The RTX 3070 is also better unlocked. But when it comes to the RTX 3080 Ti, I actually prefer my old way of doing it. It's much more efficient. I was supposed to have a part where you see how I achieved these results in this video, but it will be its own video, as I think it's more important that you learn how to actually achieve the NB minor results, as that is what the video is about. 
So if you haven't subscribed, now is a good time to do it. And hit that little bell notification for maximum spam. Now let's have a look at how to actually achieve this. Uh, down here you see number four, or maybe before I actually say anything about that. Here, number zero is my primary graphic card, and every time the screen comes on, LHR lock detected. It happens every single time. Um, but anyway, I'll just restart it after I'm done recording. Over here, number four is the one we're going to focus on. The name of the game is Stability and Voltage. You do not want any fluctuation, you want it to be completely cool as it is up here. Um, so get your GPU to 1545 and get it at a voltage around 862. This really means a lot. What LHR usually does is that when you reach a clock rate that is above something Nvidia has said, it actually nerfed the voltage down to 725 or 750 and that is why um, our graphic cards they completely dropped the hash rate. The unlocker has unlocked that so now we have the possibility of playing around with the, the milli voltage um, and the way you do that is a bit in reverse. You would think that when you set the clock rate up that it would apply more voltage. It's actually the opposite. So let's try and, and give it a plus 100 in clock here, about 110. And now you would expect it to, of course, feed it more power. It doesn't. It's completely in reverse. Uh, so, and that triggered a lockdown here. Now, if you do it in the negative direction, you can actually uh, uh, feed the graphic card more voltage and that way you get a higher and more stable hash rate. So if you you see your uh, megahertz is fluctuating in any way, you need to feed it more voltage. There. So now we have given it 918 and it should be uh, stable again as soon as the, the lock detection gets over itself. Um, you can also give it too much voltage, a very good example of that would be like, let's say minus, actually just, let's, let's just give it the very max here, that should start the fluctuation. So when you see this here, it's very bad. That means that you are feeding it too much compared to what it actually needs, um, so you need to throttle back the voltage. But the basic of overclocking Ergo unlocked and also Ethereum for that matter, this also works for Ethereum, is to focus on the voltage, get it stable. You can easily get it further and further down. The uh, less voltage you use without actually losing any uh, hash rate, the less power you use overall. So that is quite good. You can sit and tweak and it will require a lot of tweaking. It took me a long time to, to figure this out. I sat up until 4.30 in the night uh, editing videos and trying this out at the same time because I got a bit of uh, what, obsessed, I guess. I really wanted to achieve something and I did. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe. I'll release a, a new video soon about how I manually overclock without any unlock in Ergo. Um, and also please like the video, it helps me out a lot. Thank you very much.